Okay. Uh, good morning, uh, Professor David J. De Los Reyes. Okay, my topic for uh, this morning will be uh, college algebra, and I am now on lesson number 49. Uh, so we are running smooth, guys. Uh, so for those of you who are following my college algebra a long video format discussion we are now on lesson number 49 and this lesson number 49 is uh, application of exponential functions applications in real life okay uh, let's proceed the subject matter for uh, this morning will be college algebra lesson number 49 and the title of the topic will be application of exponential and logarithmic functions in real life, okay? <coughs> um, our topic now has a relevance in re real life, so we don't just solve the equations, okay? Uh, there is an importance in real life. Uh, this is uh, regarding the so-called uh, compounding of money in which uh, we invest in, uh, in banks, right? Okay, I will try to read the problem. Oh, John placed a sum of $10,500 in his savings account at 8% per annum, compounded continuously, okay? assuming that he make no withdrawal or deposit. How much is the amount after one year? And uh, the next question is, uh, when will the balance reach? $20,000. Okay, uh, this problem uh, got a re relevance in real life. So, we are not just solving a, an equation. If we try to solve this one, uh, it got a relevance in our life uh, and it is actually very important. Okay, uh, let's try to bring out the solution. <coughs> the formula on how to compute for the amount at any moment in time of a given principle under continuous compounding how I see in camera uh, we got a formula for continuous compounding uh, this was derived from differential equation but in the study of algebra okay they just presented this uh, equation here so Okay, uh, we can't do anything about it. Uh, we assume that it is correct. But if we are on the study of differential equation, we could derive this one. Okay, since we are only on the subject matter algebra, and th that algebra portion is uh, discussing applications regarding compound interest, they just presented this equation without giving any proof. Okay, uh, so we, we, we accept that uh, this formula should be correct. Okay, so I will repeat it. The amount of investment at any moment in time will be equal to the principal times E raised to the product of R times time. Uh, where R is the rate of compounding and time is the number of years that the invested money is uh, within the bank, okay? So R and T is, a, the, R here is the rate of compounding, T is the number of years. Uh, P here re represents the original amount of principal. And capital letter A represents the amount of the invested money at any moment in time. Okay, so we are actually given no, no, no. we are actually given an equation that it involves uh, the amount as a function of the principal rate and time okay so meaning to say uh, the amount at any moment in time is uh, uh, controlled by the amount of principal the rate of compounding and the time t in years. Uh, there are three variables on the right hand side. So p refers to principal, 
R refers to the rate of compounding and T is the number of years. That's the amount at any moment in time. So if we try to read again the problem, the problem is asking uh, how much is the amount after one year? The, the investment is a, a no-touch investment, meaning after putting the money, okay, you don't have to deposit anymore, you don't have to withdraw, or just uh, let it go that it will compound in interest, okay? So the problem is asking how much is the amount of money after one year with the given conditions. The rate of compounding is 8%. Okay, eight uh, percent. Okay, uh, if we try to convert eight percent as a per, uh, in terms of decimal, uh, we divide this by one hundred. So eight percent meaning it is point zero eight. Okay, and the original principal is uh, ten thousand five hundred dollars, and t is one year. So the problem is asking uh, this amount ten thousand five hundred. And it is to be compounded continuously at the rate of 0 0.08. The problem is asking what will be the amount after one year. Oh, that's an easy one. We are given the relation of uh, A as a function of principal rate in time. So, by using the given equation, which was not derived, uh, but we could derive it if we would like, uh, Amount at any moment in time is uh, principal times e raised to rt. So it's actually an exponential equation. Exponential. That's why the title of the subject matter for this morning is application problems that involves exponential function or equation. Okay, so by following the uh, given equation, amount now will be 10,500 the original investment times e okay we are on exponential function that's why the subject matter is exponential function application times e raised to r is actually 0 0.08 okay the time is one year so this should be 10,500 times e raised to 0 0.08 times 1 is 0 0.08 uh, you should learn how to use your calculator using the exponential function E, the one being used by electrical engineers, that is with the value E is a 1, second function E to the X, the value of E is a 2.718281828, that's exact value, okay, we reach that to 0 0.08, Y to the X, 0 0.08 equals the value is uh, 1.083287 okay e raised to this is 1.083287 okay multiplying 10,500 by this what comes out will be 11,374.51 Okay, that is after one year. It was a big amount because uh, if we try to subtract uh, 11,374.51 minus 10,500, it seems uh, the money uh, John invested earns a total interest of 874.51 in just one year for a continuous compounding. Compounded continuously. Right? That's a big money. Well, uh, I hope uh, for today uh, this will be fine. I think uh, our money is not earning anyone, right? Oh, that's uh, question number one. Uh, the amount of money after one year, if the given original principal is 10,500 and the rate of compounding is 0 0.08 and the time to is one year. Because the problem is asking what will be the amount after one year. So the total amount after one year is 11,374.51. That's lots of money. Right? 
Now, next question. Uh, when will the balance reach $20,000? If the original principal is $10,500, the problem is asking uh, when will uh, we reach $20,000? Oh, that's an easy one also. Why an easy one? Uh, we are given the relation of amount as a function of principal, right? So, by using again the formula principal equal to amount times E raised to RT, right? We are given the, oh, H the reverse. This should be amount. And this should be principal. Right? From the equation, amount is equal to principal times E raised to RT. The amount is uh, specified now to be 20,000, right? The original principal is 10,500 times E raised to 0 0.08 and the unknown is only time, okay? Your constant, your constant, this is E raised to 0 0.08. Eight times time. So the only unknown is time, but uh, we got the problem. The time is actually on the exponent. So <coughs> if we apply our knowledge on how to simplify an equation that involves an exponential function, actually we can solve for time t. So e raised to point zero t now uh, by dividing both sides by ten thousand five hundred, right? Uh, this one cancels, okay, what remains is E raised to 0 0.0t, E raised to 0 0.0t, and this should be equal to 20,000 divided by 10,500, okay. Uh, that's the rule under the simplification of an exponential function. Try to maintain the unknown on the left-hand side and all pure constant on the right. So E raised to 0.08t should be equal to the ratio of this. Uh, it's more than 1. 1.090476. And to compute for t, okay, uh, we use our knowledge on how to simplify an exponential function or equation. So the enemy of e is actually natural logarithm because this e here is the base of the natural logarithm. So take the natural log of both sides. The natural log of e raised to point zero t am I still on camera? Should be equal to natural log of 1.090476. And if we try to simplify this one, we could bring down this exponent here. We could put it in front times the natural logarithm of E. And this should be equal to the natural logarithm of 1.090476. And remember that the natural logarithm of E is actually equal to 1, right? So dividing both sides by 0 0.08, yeah, 0 0.08. The left-hand side, 0 0.08 cancel with this. So what remains will be t. t now will be the natural logarithm of 1.09476. It's 0 0.644357. 1.090476. .0 okay, natural logarithm. Uh, 1.09. Hold on, hold on. 1.090. Four seven six. We'll take the natural logarithm. Okay, point six four four three five seven. Is it correct? Hold on, hold on. Twenty thousand divided by ten thousand five hundred. Yeah. One point ninety four seven six. It, this should be 1.90476. So oh, we don't have a zero here. The 
just 1.90 for 76. Okay, I will repeat it. So we got 20,000 divided by 10,500. Yeah, it's correct. 1.90476. 1.90476. Uh, we will take the natural logarithm of that. It's 0 0.644357. 0 0.644357 divided by 0 0.08 equals. This is uh, 8.05 years. So our answer will be 8.05 years. So meaning to say, <coughs> the amount of 10,500 for it to become 20,000, it will take us 8.05 years. Oh, that's the answer. Uh, requirement number two, requirement number one, where's number one? This one. And if we try to bring out the graph, Okay, uh, use your knowledge on how to graph an exponential function. Uh, they should be the A axis, the amount axis. It seems it is the abscissa. Uh, no, 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 the ordinate. And the abscissa is actually time. Okay, T axis, A axis, ordinate, this is abscissa. Uh, it's easy to graph this one. Uh, uh, amount is equal to 10,500 times e raised to 0 0.08 times i. Okay? To get the so-called uh, where it passes the e axis at time t equal to 0 okay this will become 1, right? So uh, a is actually equal to 10,500. At time t equal to 0 the amount of the Total A is actually 10,500. It is this one here. It's this. Okay. After one year, we have computed that one. It is 11,374.51. This is one year. And the amount is slightly greater than 10,500. And this value is 11,374.51. If you try to increase the number of years, <coughs> this graph here should go up. Okay, it will go up. After two years, maybe, this is the amount. After three years, this is the amount. Maybe after three, this is, after four years, this is the amount. So if you try to connect all the points, this should be the graph. The, the graph of, the equation of this graph is actually this one here. An exponential function. Exponential function. Okay, uh, that's it guys. That's an application problem of the so-called exponential functions under the study of algebra. So there's no problem with it. Okay, the given equation was given to us. We assume it is correct. But when we reach differential equation, we could derive this one. Okay, uh, for those of you who are taking up uh, college algebra, this is for you guys. If you want to subscribe to my channel, my channel is at youtube.com slash at prop David J. De Los Luis. If you want to share it, please click share. Okay, try to watch my videos. I will assure you, you will learn something from it. Okay, good morning from Los Angeles. Professor David J. De Los Luis.